Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Microbiology Basics. In this one, we continue our look at bacterial meningitis by taking a look at Neisseria meningitis. Hey, so welcome back to yet more of our pleasant conversation about meningitis. In this episode, I want to take a look at Neisseria meningitis. Now, this is caused by meningococcal meningitis. So meningococcal is the culprit here behind this variation or this uh, type of uh, bacterial meningitis. Meningococcal meningitis, it's an aerobic, meaning it requires oxygen, gram-negative bacteria, and it has a polysaccharide capsule, which is important to its virulence. And so let's uh, talk about where we find this stuff. Now, just like the other three, uh, just like all three of the big causes of bacterial meningitis, this type of bacteria is not rare. In fact, you probably carry it right now or you know somebody who carries it right now. It's frequently present in the nose and throat of carriers and this is usually without causing any problems. It's about 10% of the population are reservoirs for this bacteria. And if you have it, symptoms are mostly caused by the endotoxins that are secreted by the bacteria. So endotoxins, the bacteria is poisonous and it oozes, it secretes this toxin. And so it's not the bacteria itself that is causing the problem, it's what it's producing. So I guess it is kind of the bacteria by itself, but it's, it's the endotoxins that it's creating, which causes, of course, the problems, which causes the meningitis. Symptoms are mostly caused, like I said, by the endotoxins. Its distinguishing feature is a rash that does not fade if pressed upon. In fact, there's a video out there, I'll see if I can find it and link it, where you roll kind of this, um, this rolling pin type thing over the rash to see if it disappears, and if it doesn't, bing, there you go. So how is it spread around? Well, it's spread from person to person by exchanging respiratory and throat secretions during close or lengthy contact. So you have the bacteria here and it's spread by exchanging respir respiratory and throat secretions. So you get this by coughing. So <coughs> droplets come out and you suck them in. And of course, kissing. So no snogging out there, you college kids. Uh, you can get meningitis. <laughs> No, no, I you know, 10%, you know, you don't have to worry about it too much. Of course, when my kids get to college, I'm going to warn them, no, bacterial meningitis, no snogging on campus. Anyhow, um, not as contagious uh, as common cold or flu, which is good. So uh, common cold and flu are very contagious. This is not as contagious. It's not spread by casual contact. So let's say that you uh, hang around with somebody who has the bacteria in their throat. You know, you're not going to get it just by hanging around. It's a little bit harder to catch than obviously the influenza or the common cold. So how does it begin? How does it present itself? Well, it typically begins with a throat infection. So you get the sore throat, you go, oh, something's in my throat. It can lead to bacteremia and meningitis. It usually occurs in children under two years old. And we also see sporadic outbreak in college students. So again, that goes with that whole close contact. So if your roommate has it um, and you're constantly next to them, it can cause that. And of course, like I said, snogging on campus. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm watching way too much Doctor Who. So <laughs> moving on, there are five flavors to choose from. Yes, there are. There are five different types of this bad boy. Based on capsular serotypes, you have A, B, C, Y, and W134. A, B, C, W, and Y cause most of the diseases worldwide, while B, C, and Y cause most of the illnesses C in the United States. Now, if you have a microbiology test, this makes a really good question. So, for example, they might ask you, you know, what type is the most common cause in America, while well, which is the most common cause in other countries. So, speaking of other countries, we have something called the meningitis belt. The meningitis belt is part of Sub-Sahara Africa, and this has the highest rate in the world of meningitis. This is where the disease is most common, and you find it most common during the dry seasons, during December through June. And dry seasons because of it, you're just more susceptible to the infection at that point in time. All right, that's going to conclude our quick little look here at the Neisseria meningitis. So if you like the video, be sure to click subscribe and like, uh, share it with your friends if you'd be so kind. Also, just announced uh, it's November 19th, 2015. I am currently running for a state seat out here in Texas. So if you're interested in more information on that one, 
Be sure to check down below. I put links to all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. It's all there. And of course, your support is greatly, greatly welcomed. So until later, have fun studying out there and goodbye for now.